In the year of 2008, the United States of America was undergoing a great recession. Now, why did this recession happen? Well, um, the previous years um, leading up to the recession, there was this thing called the housing bubble. And it was basically a lot of people over speculating the housing marketing and believing that it's, um, it's just continually going up because everybody needs houses, right? So um, while this, um, the housing prices kept continued to increase, people kept wanting to get more money from it and they got a little bit greedy. So they began giving mortgages to people who maybe couldn't afford it and wouldn't be able to pay them back in the future, but they still give it to them anyways. And a few very intelligent people realized this and decided to go to the banks and say, hey, um, I'm willing to pay you a million dollars every month if you're willing to insure these mortgages that I own because they knew that it was bad. But the bank thought, hey, this is free money. Housing prices are always gonna go up. Everybody needs houses. But eventually, um, one day, the housing market popped and the banks that gave this insurance to these very intelligent people all of a sudden weren't able to pay back the cost of these um, debt. So the banks eventually many of them had to declare bankruptcy. And once the Lehman Brothers bit, um, fell, that um, led to the crash and the recession of 2008. And uh, some people decided that, hey, well, how can we trust banks after this? So they decided to create a currency that avoids a middleman, and that is cryptocurrencies, online currency. So my assertion is that <coughs> Bitcoin is an unsafe midterm investment opportunity. And what is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is a cryptocurrency, and that is a currency that uses encryption to avoid the middleman. So I could send money to one of you guys, and there would be nobody in the middle that has to deal and hold that money in the process. So the three reasons for this is that Bitcoin's popularity has greatly surpassed its utility. Um, there is the second one is that um, Bitcoin is less secure than investors may believe, and the third point is that there's great risk when investing in Bitcoin. So, Bitcoin's popularity and its utility. Bitcoin is not scalable to the entire world. Um, on average, Visa debit cards, the ones that most of you may use, have about 70,000 transactions per second. Bitcoin, on the other hand, only has one megabyte of space, like on your iPhones, during each transaction. So on, at maximum, it can only have seven transactions per second. So the more this, uh, the users increase for Bitcoin, the slower it's going to get. And um, Patrick Thompson, a writer for the Cointelegraph, says, compares this to saying that the scalability problem can be thought of as feeding a large number of inputs through a narrow funnel. Even though, even though the number of inputs increases, the funnel stays the same, it gets slower and slower. Um, Bitcoin also does not function properly as a currency. As some people may, may know, Bitcoin is very popular and is very volatile. So if you were to buy a bunch of Bitcoins and want to say buy a computer with it, if the next day the, pro the value of Bitcoin dropped, you wouldn't be able to buy the computer at the same price. You would have to use more of your own money to buy that computer. Next, Bitcoin mining has become monopolized. So Bitcoin mining, another way to get Bitcoins um, by using your computer, has become monopolized by four major groups. And so the theory of Bitcoin being having no middleman and having no centralized area becomes all of a sudden centralized by these four major le leaders of the Bitcoin mining community. Peter Todd, one of the main um, founders of Bitcoin, said that, I made a promise to myself a while back that I'd sell 50% of my Bitcoins if a pool hit 50%, and it's happened. So if you were looking into making money through mining, that is a lot less likely now. My second claim, Bitcoin is less secure than investors believe. Bitcoin companies are hackable. So say you wanted to invest in Bitcoin, and wanted to use one of the Bitcoin investing companies, that company itself is hackable. While the Bitcoins themselves may not be, a hacker could hack the company and steal all your money through that. One of the major points is in 2014, a company called Mt. Gox being hacked and stolen for everything it's, everything it's worth. And Mark Carpeel, the oh, CEO of Mt. Gox said, we had weaknesses in our systems and our Bitcoin vanished. We've caused trouble and inconvenience to many people and I'm deeply sorry for what happened but it happened because people decided to trust this third party. And Bitcoin wallets are also not secure. Bitcoin in a sense is just like your own wallet and Bitcoin is the money inside. While the money, Bitcoin itself cannot be stolen, somebody could find out the password to your wallet and steal everything in your wallet, just like they pickpocket your wallet. And Bitcoin, um, 
The third point, there is great risk when investing in Bitcoin. As I mentioned earlier, Bitcoin is extremely volatile and um, every day since there's more popularity growing with it, the price say from last month where it was 20,000 can all of a sudden to drop to a point this month where it's at 14,000. Um, Jamie Dimon, the CEO of JP Morgan Chase Bank says that there is the only value of Bitcoin is what the other guy will pay for it. So there is actually no real value behind Bitcoin, unlike the US dollar that is backed by our government. And lastly, Warren Buffett, one of the greatest investors of all time, stated in a recent um, interview with CNBC that in terms of cryptocurrencies, generally, generally, I can say almost with certainty that they will come to a bad ending. Now when it happens or how anything else, I don't know. So to sum it all up, in the next two to four years, if you were to invest your money into Bitcoin now, you would probably come to realize that that was a really poor investment. All right, Nathaniel, uh, the propositions identified, you do have a, not a conditional statement on it, but uh, I guess a qualifier on it about it being a, an unsafe midterm investment. And I'm going, okay, so why does that matter? What is important as, as opposed to a short-term or long-term investment? And I don't really ever get any explanation of that and why that qualifier is there. So I thought I, that was one of the first places that uh, things were a little bit confusing. Frankly, the idea of the cryptocurrency is something that I don't fully understand. I, I know that you did a, a reasonable job trying to explain how it works and the the idea behind it, I know that there is uh, some theory here. I've not yet grasped it myself. I'm not sure that others will have grasped it themselves. Uh, so it becomes a little bit problematic. You're talking about something that exists as a hypothetical in most people's minds without necessarily understanding the full you know, concept uh, behind it. The arguments that you laid out, though, I thought were relatively clear. You had a good preview of what the supporting points were going to be. Um, you labeled them as you got to each of those particular points. That was fine. Uh, on the first point, uh, on the transaction issue, for instance, I just didn't quite get why, why does this 70,000 per minute versus seven per minute matter if you're not, if, for example, if you don't have that many people using Bitcoin uh, or if you, you know, like there's a context that's not quite clear. Uh, now, I appreciated the metaphor that, you, that the expert had there that where they compared it to a bottleneck sort of thing and uh, you just don't have enough, and I'm going, okay, so how does that work in practicality and I really don't have any clue. Like I said, I feel a little bit stupid because I'm listening to something that I don't fully grasp and I'm not sure that I can follow the inferences that are always being made. Uh, I, Frankly, I, I think that there needs to be a little bit more clarification on. The security issue, it's so funny because several times you say, well, you can't steal it, and then the very next thing you're saying is, but it, it can be taken. And I'm going, oh, wait a second, how does this work? Uh, you either have it or you don't have it, or it exists or it doesn't exist. Apparently, it can both exist and not exist at the same time, and that definitely confuses me. Um, the the, the risks that you're talking about I thought were okay. I assume that the data that you have that it was worth 20,000 last month and 14,000 this month is accurate data, but I don't get any source citation on that. Uh, the source citation that you gave at the end from um, Warren Buffett was okay, although it does, 
you know, Buffett's credibility is undermined a little bit because he says, oh, I don't know exactly how it's going to happen, but it's going to go, uh, you know, the way of the buffalo. It's going to have some problem. It's going to collapse. I'm going, well, wait a second. Uh, if you don't know why it's going to collapse, why should I believe what you're saying? Uh, that seems a little bit problematic also. So uh, it's not that it was a bad speech. I think it's uh, talking about a subject that's a little bit ambiguous and hard to uh, get our fingers around and hold on to. Um, but it's structured pretty clearly. I, I did hear evidence being presented in the speech, and I think uh, you usually tried the best you could to explain things. Maybe we just need more time in order to make it have a little bit more sense. All right. Thank you.